So I had to go and prove myself, run the field and impress the, the coach. So I was running all over the field, you know, um, showing the coach I could, what I could do. And, uh, and when I came, came back to the, over the line, my, all my, my school mates said to me, hey, we're going to call you Spider because that's how you were running around the field. My grandfather took me to uh, South Beach and he said, I want to buy a little present. And he gave me, he bought me a, um, a little dumper board and uh, I waded out into like a sandbank. I caught my first wave lying on this little dumper board. I thought, wow, this is it. Then I joined the Life Saving Club, uh, Dolphins Life Saving Club, and then we, uh, we were sea cadets. So we, we, we did our duties on, on, on the weekends and also uh, we paddled on, we hired surfer planes out so we could actually get on them and, and catch a few waves and we learned to surf there as well. And then the older guys were um, surfing on the outside. There were no leashes in those days, and they'd lose their boards. So we'd run, go and catch them before they got into the rocks paddle out, swing around, catch a few waves and give it back to the, to the owner. And that's how we started. In the clubhouse, I was starting to repair boards. I, you know, I, was, I was intrigued about you know, with the resin, how clear it was and how beautiful, you know, the, when you fix the ding, how clean they came out. So I did, started doing that and the ding got bigger and bigger to eventually I was ready to make a surfboard. So I made my first surfboard at home. And then from there, um, my mom made me do a trade. So I was making surfboards at, at night, so eventually I said to my boss, sorry, but I have to quit because um, I, uh, I'm just too busy making surfboards. So a friend of mine and me, we started off a brand called War Surfboards. That was from like 1968 to about 1971. And that, that uh, we, did, we did good there. We had good surfers riding our boards and that. And then my friend wanted out. He just said, listen, uh, he doesn't have the patience to make surfboards, so so I, that's when I joined Safari with Graham Hines and Lorraine Hines, and, uh, and when I joined them, suddenly the businesses took off. So from there they gave me shares, and um, and then Sean Thompson came along and uh, he became world champion. All the models we did for him, Sean and Michael Thompson, and then we had lots of other good, you know, world-class servers riding our boards. It was Martin Potter and uh, Pierre Tosti and. You know, the, the list just goes on. There's just so many surfers, international guys as well. And there's also Gavin Rudolph from, from the Cape area. He was our team rider. So, yeah, we really got busy. And then it got to a stage where <clears throat> Graham wanted to retire. And so I partnered up with Rod Stanton. And that went for like uh, 10 years. And then other partners came in. As, during that time, and then Rod Stanton wanted out because he wanted to go into into, into building, and then uh, my partner Lonnie Tiggs he wanted out, and then the last one was Neil Hart he wanted out. So, so basically I'm on my own now, and uh, it's, it's nice because we uh, <clears throat> we don't have any stress issues. Yeah, we work hard. Uh, our goals are to make our customers happy, and what we do is. Uh, we must meet our, our deadlines. So the rule here, number one rule is to have a good attitude. And that's what I use in my coaching as well. So when I, um, when I take my kids down, they've got to greet everybody. <clears throat> they mustn't drop in. Um, they must have respect wherever they are. And, um, and also train hard. You know, if they want to earn a wave, you know, you know, be competitive, but stick to the rules of surfing.